Do you know that sound of the cart at your school that has the one squeaky wheel? And when something really heavy is put on that cart, the squeak manages to get louder? I'm talking about the cart that you can hear coming from miles away. Squeak, 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 rolling down the hallway, obviously carrying something very heavy. And it stops outside your classroom and delivers your brand new boxes of math curriculum. We all know that feeling, right? Well, today I'm here to talk about ways you can make that math workshop work within the bounds of a current math curriculum, as well as some tips and tricks for getting centers a part of that math workshop. Even when you're expected to use a math curriculum, send that squeaky card away. Don't worry, I have lots of ideas for you today. Let's get started. The first tip I have for you today is to use your math curriculum. And I know what you're saying, um, I'm so sorry. What? But hear me out. Why reinvent the wheel? I can guarantee whatever curriculum you have has all of the pieces of a great lesson. It's going to have really clear student objectives, standards, uh, what we will do today or an essential question for students to work off of as well as lesson plans, resources, and a clear direction, as well as an assessment piece at the end, right? At least that's what we're looking for in these curriculum documents. So use it. Put that curriculum to work for you in your whole group lesson. If they have practice problems, great. Use their practice problems. Maybe they have a starter question at the beginning of the unit that is awesome to engage students and get those wheels turning. Use it. Make those curriculum pieces work for you in your whole group lesson. Another key piece of math workshop that we love, love, love is small groups. And we love the power of a differentiated small group that's designed to meet individual student needs wherever they are within the current content. To make my life easier, I use my small group as an extension of my whole group lesson. And I really suggest using curriculum pieces within that small group. Again, it's there for us. It's a resource we are encouraged or sometimes expected to use. So use it. I like to use my student workbook pages in my small group, but you can just change how you're doing them for each group's needs. Again, don't make your life harder by planning for four different small groups multiple times a week. I will use the same curriculum workbook page with all of my groups on the same day. I just use it to support their needs differently. My lowest group, my students who need the most support, we're going to do all the activities on that curriculum task together. Whereas my middle group who is beginning to understand the skill just need a little refresher, a little more support. Maybe we'll do half together and then they'll do the second half independently with my guidance and small group. And then you know those students who could do the whole page by themselves. That means let them start your small group with that task and then give them an extension task. I bet if you look in your curriculum, you can find an extension task there for them too. Use it to meet your students' needs in small groups. All right, now's the time for what I really love to talk about because am I passionate about math curriculum that I'm being handed? No. Am I passionate about math centers and the learning that happens there? Yes. Math centers are such a valuable part of your math workshop. And I promise math centers have a place in your math classroom. Even if you are expected to use a full blown math curriculum. Don't worry. There's a few different ways you can work these into your classroom math workshop structure. Within math workshop, the centers piece is one of the most important pieces because it's giving students the opportunity to practice and reinforce skills continuously and independently. Can you imagine the pace that things would move at if everything was whole group? I have a 90 minute math block. That's a lot of whole group. By using centers, it gives students valuable independent math time. And we know so often that's where the light bulb starts to go off. That's why we at Not So Wimpy Teacher love math workshop because it is so fun watching our students find success working in those math centers. 
we have a few centers that we prefer to use. We structure all of our centers rotations the same way. This way students are really familiar with the expectations for math centers every day of the week. We like to include a meet with teach, that's your small group, technology, fact fluency, and an independent practice. A lot of times we'll use that independent practice as a spiral review. So maybe it's gonna be a center task from one of our grade level bundles that is reviewing a previous skill. So when I'm in my rounding unit, my center's activity for that independent practice might be a multiplication activity. A few things. So in a perfect world, if I were given a brand new math curriculum and said, okay, we wanna see this happen during your math block, this is how I would structure it. I would do a 15 to 20 minute whole group lesson using my math curriculum as pieces of my instruction. I would then break off into my center work. So I will meet with my students in their leveled small groups based on their needs for that specific math skill. While I'm meeting with two to three small groups, one at a time, my other students are working on those centers activities throughout my classroom. You can work that curriculum in, in whole group, in small group. You could even use curriculum pieces as center tasks. More importantly, your students are going to be doing engaging, challenging work as mathematicians that's only going to help them continue to grow. If you are ready for more math support, maybe you are excited to launch a math workshop in your classroom, or maybe you heard the squeaky wheel coming down the hallway with your brand new math curriculum, and you're looking for ways to really make it work hard for your students, get excited. We have our brand new Not So Wimpy Teacher Math Masterclass. This class is phenomenal and it walks you through beginning to end of launching a successful and effective math workshop in your classroom. We have a few different options here. If this card pops up, it means there's still a wait list. We are putting the finishing touches on the course. It's going to be great. Be patient, my friends. Put yourself on the wait list. If this card pops up, it means we are celebrating. The math masterclass is live and you can go sign up. If you are ready to grow as a math instructor, this is the course for you. I know we hate the dreaded sound of the curriculum delivery cart coming around, but that doesn't mean we can't make that curriculum work really well for us and our students within the structure of a math workshop. I hope I gave you some ideas today about making those centers find a place within that curriculum and making that curriculum work really hard for your students. Let me hear from you down in the comments. What are you looking to incorporate into your math instruction? How can we help you with that math instruction? Don't forget about our math masterclass sign ups, whether you're signing up for the wait list or the course itself depending on when it is ready for you and when you're watching this video don't forget about this guy and keep watching for our series on math instruction next week I'm going to be talking all about behavior management during that math block and you can find all of our math instruction videos in our playlist on math instruction thank you guys so much for watching and as always we hope you have a not so empty day